According to evolution, man is a newcomer to planet Earth, far removed from the origin of the universe. If the universe was born 14 billion years ago, as many evolutionists and theistic evolutionists believe, man didn't come along until about 13.996 billion years later, according to evolutionists. If such time were represented by one 24-hour day and the alleged Big Bang occurred at the very beginning of the day, at 12 a.m., then man did not arrive on the scene until after 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 58 seconds. That's right. Man's allotted time during one 24-hour day would represent a measly two seconds. If the Bible taught, either explicitly or implicitly, that man was so far removed from the origin of the universe, Bible-believing Christians would have no reservations accepting the 14-billion-year timeline. Just as Christians believe that God parted the Red Sea and raised Jesus from the dead, we would accept that humans appeared on earth billions of years after the beginning of creation, if that was what the Bible taught. The problem for theistic evolutionists and those sympathetic to the evolutionary timeline is that God's Word never hints at such a timeline. In fact, it does the very opposite. The Bible makes a clear distinction between things that took place before the foundation of the world and events that occurred after the foundation of the world. Jesus prayed to the Father on the night of His arrest and betrayal, saying, You love me before the foundation of the world. Peter revealed in his first epistle how Jesus was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Paul informed the Christians in Ephesus how God chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Before God created the heavens and the earth, He was alive and well. If evolutionists are correct, then man arrived on the scene not before the foundation of the world, obviously, nor soon after the foundation of the world, but eons later, 13.996 billion years later to be precise. This theory, however, blatantly contradicts Scripture. Jesus taught that the blood of all the prophets was shed from or since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah who perished between the altar and the temple. Not only did Jesus' first century enemies murder the prophets, but their forefathers had slain them as well ever since the days of Abel. Observe that Jesus connected the time of one of the sons of Adam and Eve to the foundation of the world. This time is contrasted with the time of a prophet named Zechariah whom Jesus told his enemies, you murdered between the temple and the altar. Zechariah was separated from the days of Abel by thousands of years. His blood was not shed near the foundation of the world. Abel's was. Certain early martyrs, including Abel, lived close enough to creation for Jesus to say that their blood had been shed from the foundation of the world. If man arrived on the scene billions of years after the earth was formed and hundreds of millions of years after various living organisms such as fish, amphibians, and reptiles came into existence, as the evolutionary timeline affirms, how could Jesus' statement make sense? The fact is, man was not created eons after the beginning of the world. Rather, he has been here from the foundation of it. On another occasion, when Jesus' enemies approached him, they questioned him about the lawfulness of divorce. Jesus responded by saying, But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Jesus is not suggesting here that Adam and Eve were created at the beginning of day one of the creation week. The word creation from the Greek katesis in Mark 10.6 is not used in the specific sense of the week of creation. If that were the case, then Jesus would have said that the original couple were made at the end of the creation week. Jesus is referring to, as Greek scholars note, the sum total of everything created, the world. In other words, Adam and Eve were so far removed from the first century A.D. and the time in which Jesus made this statement that one could truly say that the first human beings were made from the beginning of the world, of the universe, of creation. Similar to how Jesus associated Abel's day with the foundation of the world in Luke 11, he noted in Mark 10 that the forming of Abel's parents, Adam and Eve, on day 6 of the creation should also be considered from the beginning. 
If the 14 billion year timeline of evolution were true, Jesus' statement in Mark 10, 6 would be erroneous. Adam and Eve would have been nowhere close to the beginning of the universe, but would have arrived at the end, 13.996 billion years after it began. Simply put, the theory of evolution and Jesus' statement in Mark 10, 6 cannot both be true. In the epistle to the Christians in Rome, the Apostle Paul also alluded to how long man has been on the earth. He wrote, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Although some might suggest that angels can understand God's invisible attributes, the context of Romans 1, 18-32 clearly refers to humans, not angels. Of all on earth, man understands the eternal power and divine nature of God. How long has man been aware of God and His invisible attributes? Since the creation of the world. So could man logically have been perceiving and understanding God since the creation of the world if He is separated by millions or billions of years from the creation of the heavens and the earth, the sea, and so many animals like trilobites and dinosaurs? Such a scenario completely contradicts Scripture. The simple fact is, one cannot logically believe in both evolution and the Bible. A choice must be made between the two. One can choose the ever-changing, man-made, unscientific theory of evolution, or he can decide to believe the Word of the Lord that neither withers nor falls away, but endures forever.